What's going on everybody? David here, back with another video. I am finally back from Colombia, had an amazing time. And today I wanna to talk about my, my travel here. So how was the travel during coronavirus? Uh, but first off on this channel, we talk about inspiring people to travel more using points. That sounds like something interesting to you. Please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell notification so you can get future updates on my videos. All right, so we're back. We're gonna continue talking about credit cards in my on my commute so the coronavirus i it, the, the crazy thing about it and, and you know coming from colombia colombia they're not talking about it as much as as they're talking about it in the u.s and that's mainly because it hasn't really hit colombia too hard yet i mean there i think there were a few confirmed cases i don't know if anyone has died from coronavirus uh, in colombia uh, not to my knowledge. I, I don't know. I, I haven't looked at all their stats, but I do know there are only a, a couple of confirmed cases uh, while I was out there. Uh, whereas in, in, in the U.S., it's been a lot. It's been a lot more. So uh, my trip back, I was flying business class on Avianca. And when I got to the airport, first off, flying just within the country no questions asked they were they didn't ask me anything additional as far as have i uh, traveled from um china or anything like that uh, no no questions came out like that now when i did get to bogota on my flight home so the international flight they did ask me a series of questions about uh, where i was where i have traveled in the last uh, few weeks and then they gave me, they had a, a little red um, sticker that they put on my, my ticket. That way they knew that they had asked me those questions. And then prior to boarding, like when we were actually in the jetway, so they, and at, in, at the Bogota airport, they closed off certain sections. And so I couldn't even book, I couldn't even go sit down. Like normally you can go sit down uh, right at your gate, even if your, your flight is not, Yet, has not yet happened, you can still just sit at your gate. Well, they didn't allow us to do that. They actually had a door that was shut and they only opened that door an hour prior to uh, boarding. So, uh, and it didn't matter to me. Like I was in the lounge anyway, but I'm just saying like, I, I, always, I always have this routine. I always walk to my gate, confirm that that's the gate where I'll be flying out of, and then I go to the lounge and, and hang out. Uh, I just want to know, first off, how what's the distance from the lounge? Like, how long is it going to take me to get there? That way I kind of have an idea of, okay, I can stay in the lounge until this time, and then I can go ahead and start heading back. And so uh, once you got to, once I got to the gate, then they did ask me a series of questions, and then they gave me the little the little red uh, dot on my, on my uh, ticket. And then when we got into the jetway, they asked a series of questions again, and just confirming that you this is your bag. And some of the questions that they they normally ask is confirming, is this your bag? Did you pack it? Or did you have did you have control of the bag the whole time? Uh, so they asked that those questions again, and then I went on my way, got on the plane, and then got to Los Angeles Airport, so LAX. So when I got to LAX, the process was the same nothing changed at all a uh, little surprising i guess i don't know i mean maybe because we're coming from colombia and colombia doesn't have like an outbreak of coronavirus there wasn't um uh, it wasn't really an issue i guess i don't know i, I really don't know what happened <laughs> but no questions were asked i have i have global entry so i was able just to go through the the kiosk and that was it uh, got my bags just the, the normal the same normal routine that I do every time that I that I come back from uh, from traveling internationally so that was a process at the airport like I said not much when it came when I got to LAX there wasn't much different I, I, there, there wasn't any difference I didn't I didn't see any difference didn't feel any different um, now on the plane too and I, I should mention this uh, I didn't see anything different either so I didn't they, they, they say that there's they're they're cleaning the airplanes uh, more frequently. I think if um, anything over an hour, if a plane sits for over an hour, they're they're wiping the planes down. Uh, I know my uh, seat partner; she wiped her area down. Actually, even gave me a little wipe too, so I can wipe my my area down. 
Uh, so they're 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 supposed to be doing that because the like the, I guess the common flu virus like contact it can it can last for like nine days. They don't know about the coronavirus yet. How long that actually lasts? Uh, like if you if you touch something, uh, how long that lasts? Or if someone else touches the same thing, they can uh, they can um, get the flu or something like that or get the coronavirus. They don't know how long it actually will uh, stay. Uh, stay on whatever that is that you've touched. So uh, they are cleaning the planes more frequently, and I'm flying on a United United partner. So I'm I'm imagining that all the Star Alliance partners are using the same procedure. I would hope, but um, yeah, I can't confirm that. So I can't confirm if Avianca is doing that or not. Uh, my the area that I sat in seemed to be relatively clean, so that didn't seem to be an issue. Uh, now, I do want to talk about, too, and we're bouncing back to LAX, the the ride-sharing program. They've changed it a little bit now where you can't catch an Uber or a Lyft. You can't catch it from the airport. You actually have to go to a designated area. Basically, they're taking you to, I believe it was Lot C parking, or at least around that area somewhere, so like long-term parking. So you take a bus. They'll take you over to that area, and then once you get to that area, then you can catch a Lyft or you can catch an Uber. Now, that process was very good. And I know they had some issues early on uh, when it came to this whole process. And people were really upset because uh, I, 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 I don't know exactly how the process worked before, but I could see a problem with, with it. Because now they give you, basically, if you... If you show that you want to get a pickup uh, for Lyft or for Uber at the airport at that designated area, then they give you a code. So it's not like a regular Lyft or Uber ride where you just say you want the ride and then they'll tell you the vehicle that you're looking for and then the person will pull up and then you get in the vehicle and go. They actually give you a code and that code that they give you is what you use to and basically so you're just all you don't have to wait in line you don't have to wait for your vehicle basically you get the code you walk around you get to the the first available lift car you show them that code they type it in their their system or in their in their phone and then it will tell them where that ride is going and then you just go from there uh, one thing that lift does have that i like is that you as the the consumer or the passenger you have to confirm that vehicle so um, with Uber, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But basically when I say confirm, so I show her the code or I show him the code, they type in that information on their phone. It shows them the destination where I need to go, but then it will send me on my phone, it'll send me a message saying, confirm this vehicle and it will have that, that same vehicle on there so I can confirm and say, yes, this is the vehicle that I'm getting into. And that's uh, an added security measure. And it's good because if it's let, let's say with, with with Uber, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. You just show them the code. They say get in and go. Now, what if that person was a shady individual, right? And you show them the code, and they're not a real Uber driver, or they are whatever. It doesn't matter. But they they you you jump in the car and then they go, and they don't have there's no they don't put that information into anything, right? So. The fact that Lyft has something, you know, where you can say, okay, yeah, this, I do confirm this is the vehicle and, I, and I'm on my way. Uh, Uber doesn't have that. So uh, that that's something like I, I'm, I'm really looking at Lyft and Uber now because I don't, I no longer use Uber. And that's only because the Chase Sapphire Reserve now has a partnership with Lyft. And so I'm starting to use Lyft and so I'm looking at the differences, and that is one of the differences that I noticed coming out of LAX. So uh, Lyft seems to be doing a little bit better when it comes to the, the whole security measures. But when it comes to the coronavirus, you know, just getting back to that, uh, I didn't see any real changes in the airport. Now, I did see there were a lot less people traveling. I, you could clearly see it. You go through, we came through customs, and it is the emptiest I've ever seen it in customs. And I, I, like I said, I usually, I, I mean, I always go through global entry, but I still have to walk past the regular uh, customs line. And 
there were, it, it was a ghost town. Um, I got in at a busy time, even though it was a Tuesday, it's still a busy time period. It was like between six and seven a PM. And that's generally pretty busy, but there was, there was no one there. It was, it was a ghost town. So the, the travel industry definitely is, is, is suffering uh, from, from this, this whole thing. A lot of people are not getting on a plane. And so uh, that means that you're going to see a lot of deals coming out and that could be good for consumers. But uh, also I think as a whole, the industry is going to really be, they're really going to hurt uh, the, the travel industry, which is going to trickle down into a lot of different a lot of different uh, jobs and, and, and things like that. So we'll just have to see what happens with that. Now I'll, I'll put out a video. I want to talk about that too. Uh, but as far as traveling, the coronavirus, I didn't really see a difference when it came to security. The only only difference was when I was in Colombia coming back uh, into the U.S. Uh, they did ask me a series of questions, but that was it. There's no, you know, there, <laughs> I don't see them doing any testing or anything like that. Uh, taking your temperature and stuff like that, like you, you, you saw in China. Uh, I, I didn't see any of that. So that's what I want to share with you guys. But I want to know, more importantly, I want to know what you guys, what your experience has been. Have you guys traveled lately? What has your experience been on a plane, on a train, subway? Let me know what, if there's any, if there's been any differences, uh, please let me know. And, and just in your job site too, like have there, have there been any differences in your job site? Are they issuing you guys different things, mask maybe, or um, alcohol wipes or anything like that. Please let me know down below. Okay, one more thing I wanna to mention too is wearing masks. Like I did see more people wearing masks than I normally do at the airport, uh, but I always do see people wearing masks. So it wasn't like, there wasn't a, a huge amount of people wearing, like everyone was wearing a mask. I didn't see that. I did notice the customs agents in Colombia we're wearing masks, but that makes sense. I mean, they're they're seeing people from all over the world all day for eight hours or 10 hours or, or however long they work. So that does make sense. Uh, but for, you know, as a whole, I didn't see that much of a change when it came to that. Uh, so, all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and take off. Please uh, hit the like button if you like this video. You're gonna start getting more videos from the car and then as well as videos from my, my sets and everything at home. So you'll you'll see those. But uh, yeah, I'm back. So subscribe for more. Talk to you guys later. Bye.